Hello again. Thank you very much for um, tuning in. Um, I just wanted to have a chat about um, working in recording studios. I don't know why. It's just I'm sat here. It's uh, what, Friday morning. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm sat here. It's a beautiful, beautiful day outside. I mean, every day you'd be going ground. It's such a good day, don't you think? But uh, the fact that I can breathe in. People ask me, what's, the fav- what's your most favourite thing you do, Bob? Breathe. In and out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Look at this. Expecting, expecting me to say, I like going to the cinema or, you know, um, going to the pub, or, which I don't, but uh, cinema's not too bad. But I don't say that kind of thing. I always reply with uh, breathing. Well, that's my favourite thing. But what do you mean? Well, because I can't do anything else unless I'm breathing. Can't, uh, nor can you, nor can any of us, anyway. But um, I just sat here thinking that, um, oh, I fancy having a chat. It was just just, just about uh, rec- one of the recordings I worked on in, in my time which was uh, an album for a Spanish band. I call them a band, but they were basically a duo. This guy and this girl singer. They, they weren't like together romantically, but they, they were like songwriting partners kind of thing. They, they were really good as well. And they had uh, released two records in Spain at, t- at that time. Uh, both of them had gone gold in Spain, which is well, 35,000 units, I think, but something like that. Anyway, so they're, they're both at um, level, at that level, gold, gold record level. They'd released two albums, and they were on uh, EMI Records in Spain. And uh, they basically went to their record company and said, we want a, an English producer for our next album. Is that all right with you? Can, can we do that? So the record company ummed and ahed a bit, because obviously it cost money. Cost money. money. But Paco and... Uh, oh, um, and uh, this young lady, whose name I didn't mean to say is though, um, they basically said, well, no, we want an English producer, and we're selling, we're doing all right, so, you know, it, and in effect, it's the record, the artists end up paying for everything, because it's all taken off their royalties at the end of the day anyway, so even though the record company are funding it, it's only like a front-end funding, because it comes off with the royalty statements at the end anyway, so the band and the artists end up paying for it normally, so... Record companies are just bankers in that sense. They just advance the money, pretty much. So anyway, that's what they did. So anyway, so they've decided to come and do, do this thing. They've re- had all these songs for their new album, and they demoed the songs over the So, So the producer, I might mention, but uh, actually a really good friend of mine, and uh, somebody I really respect, and uh, he's, they sent over a tape, a cassette tape of all their songs, just in their like demo form. And so I listened to all this stuff, and it was all right. Our songs were okay, but it kind of like it sounded, didn't quite sound as modern as I thought it could do. It wasn't as creative as I thought it could be. And I guess that was my part of the equation. That's why I'd been booked to do it, if you like, because some people thought that I could bring that to to a project, you know, some kind of uh, different angle kind of thing. Well, of course I would, because I just see things differently than other people. I mean, we all do. It doesn't mean I'm good or bad or indifferent. It just means that I'm different to how somebody else might look at it, but people seem to think it was all right. So anyway, so so I basically l- listened to th- th- these tracks as little as possible, possible, and just, so I just got the keyboard, played the songs, just worked the chords out, and then played the songs through and try, try to come up with a demo with a, So then I made like demo tracks again, if you like, of all those songs, just music, but with my version of how the music should be. About, I did that. I do. I normally do it on the last bit. So, like, the, if the band, the band was flying on, on the next, the band are coming on on Friday or whatever it was to uh, audition and listen to what you've done, Bob. Okay. Uh oh. So, on the Thursday, actually, it wasn't quite. I was on the Wednesday. It used to take me two hours per song to like do that and like turn it from. I had to work the chords out as well. So I used to work the chords out and. Um, Make, make the backing, backing track of it like in a sequencer. That's more or less what I did. But it used to take me two hours per song. And there were t- 11, 12, actually there were 12 songs because one of them didn't get on the album, but there were 12. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there were 12 songs. So that's, I did six a day basically. I had two long days on the Wednesday and Thursday before the Friday they come. Anyway, so these guys turn up on the Friday. and But they don't speak Adi in English. So there's a translator there. Great big girl, a lovely, lovely woman who was actually Mexican. You could speak English, Spanish, Italian, and whatever. And uh, the guy, it, the, um, so anyway, so it's quite a nervous, nerve wracking thing for me because they've turned up at the studio and here's me, someone they've never met before, messing with all their songs. You know, I've ripped their songs apart and redone them. Who the hell am I to do that kind of thing? So, um, but it's, it's not the first time I've done that. So anyway, they came in and I played them through the songs and it turns out they really liked them. They both really liked them. So, wow, oh, we love them. Oh, great, thank God for that, you know, that kind of thing. So then we go from that stage, that's the, what I call the pre-production stage. So everything's been done. So now we've checked, they've got the backing track, backing track to 
new arrangements, of which uh, had some influence. So, so uh, we've gone to this big studio, which was in um, Ripley, just up towards Surrey, on just up on the A3, called Black Barn Studios, with uh, the owner of whom was uh, the owner of which was a guy called Robin Black. Brilliant, lovely guy. I love, love, and a very talented. Talented man. Look through his through his history. Black. He's done some stuff. That chap, and I really liked him. Anyway, he was the studio owner, and he was the engineer on on the session, which which went through to the end. We d we did get there, but there were some trials and tribulations there, to be honest, because um, during this time, one of the reasons they wanted this particular producer, because they obviously had gone to their record company, said we want an English producer. They had meetings with several, and. None of them were really available, but because they weren't a, a massive, massive selling thing, they weren't that appealing to the big record producers because their sales were only th only thirty five thousand in that kind of area. So anyway, they ended up with this particular producer, whose gambit, if you like, to get the job and secure the job as the producer was that he could bring some real good guitar players into the equation, and it, and that's what the guys, uh, the um, the two the, sing the two singers, if you like, from the band. That's what he wanted. That that was what good. Oh, I can bring some serious. Anyway, one of the guitar players was um, I can't mention his name, but I really want to. I'm not going to. And it was a guitar player in quite a famous band from like the 70s. And when they, I didn't recognise his name when they said, I said, who's this guy coming tomorrow? Oh, it's so and so. Oh, who's he then? Oh, he's the from, from oh, he's there. Blimey, I didn't realise that. White a shade of pale. I, I won't say any more than that. Anyway, so this guitar player's coming in, and he he's, he's awful. We set him up in the studio and he's trying to play through this song. I've given him a chord chart. And at one point he's playing the wrong song. So he's turned out and it was just, I just thought this is like pulling teeth, you know. I'd rather go and have root canal work done than watch this guy play. So my friend Gary Shaw, he come up from Portsmouth, who sadly only got to play on one track on the album, but he'd come up for the day. I was to look forward to that happening. And it was Gary's there and we're watching this guy. And Gary says to me, I just got the pub. Oh, I'm not a pub person, I don't drink, so I can't, all right, and, but Gary likes the beer. I've drunk, so we've gone down to the pub, it's a lunchtime on this day, sun's out, sun's out, today, about the same time as I'm talking now. now. And we ended up having six pints of Stella, crikey, I was out of my face, out of my face. So we'd gone back to the studio after six pints of Stella, not a good idea. And this guy is playing through this, he's on the same song. We'd been down the pub and had six pints of lager, he's still trying to record the same song as when we left. So I looked at Gary, and Gary looked at me, and I, I, I can't help myself, I've got to speak out. And he was playing through this song, and he was playing the wrong chord at this one point. So I said, to, I just said, excuse me, and the producer was, was not a happy boy, he wasn't a happy buddy at all. So I said to this guitar player, excuse me, um, at that point there, what chord are you playing there? He said, well, I'm, he said no, I said, no, no, you're, you're playing, I said, it's, uh, I said, you're playing an F minor, F minor, F sharp minor seventh, aren't you? He said, yeah, I said, well, no, it's actually an A6. It's the same kind of thing, but it's not the same kind of thing because it's um, a different key centre to where the... Can you just try something? Anyway, so going through all this, producer, right at that, at that time, just big time. Stood, stood, <laughs> booted, literally kicked his foot under the bottom of the mixing desk and stormed out of the control room of the studio. That was it. Just, then, all the out on the mixing desk, and he did that. Baff! So I did all the lights went out on the mixing desk. Oh no! So I said to uh, Robin, the um, owner, "Oh dear, are we, are we in trouble?" He said, "Yeah." I said, so that we ended up having to phone an engineer to come in, like an electrical engineer to come in and fix that. That was like the end of the recording for the day. It was murder. It was murder. But anyway, so we got that. We finally got all that. Stuff, all that stuff. And this, we ended up, ended up getting um, bands play that used to tour with them in Spain. Because I said to them, "Look, you, you, this album, you're not going to get this. It was actually me. I just." I shouldn't have done this really, but I did. I just said to them quietly, who's your guitar player in Spain? They said, oh, Angel, a guy called Angel, spelled angel. And I just said, get him over, fly him over now. Otherwise you're not going to get your album finished. Because if this is the standard of the session players you're going to get, you ain't going to, first of all, you're going to end up with crap. And secondly, you ain't going to get there. Get, at least you know what you're going to get from your guitar player. He goes on talk, get him over. So they did, they called it, and he was a lovely bloke as well. Absolutely lovely, I'm glad he came actually. But um, anyway, we got him over there. But when we got down to like the mix down, so all the tracks have been recorded and it's time for mix down now. And uh, the girl singer, bless her, it was really talented as well. She had a gorgeous voice and played keyboards brilliantly as well. It was quite tough actually to work out what chord she'd played, but I managed to do it. She was. She said to me, oh, well done, you've kids my score. Is it that? She said, not quite, but this is, this is 
I said, well, that's how I'm, how I'm hearing, you know, and that's how I did it. There's a song called No, um, no Fragua Bar or something it was called. Beautiful, beautiful piece of music. But uh, she, when are we doing the mix down? So everything's being recorded. Now we're sort of push, trying to make the mix of the, the record sound great for the record company. She's in tears. She's in tears. And nobody seemed to know. I knew why she was in tears because her career was going down the toilet fast. And I, I was sat there and I was before my very eyes. I watched these two artists and they'd been on at the record company for years. Can we please have an English record producer? And there it was, there they were in England with an English record producer with their career going down the toilet. Not good news. So, um, but we got there and uh, we got it finished and the record finally got out there. And uh, I think it didn't, not too badly. It didn't quite do as well as they should have done. But the, I have to say, not just saying this, but I was quite happy with my sort of input, if you like, the keyboards that ended up ending in there, you know, staying on the record kind of thing. Because what happens is when you do that, you get asked as a session player, oh, Bob, can you play some keyboards on this track, please? So you, and especially if you've got somebody from the record company there as well, you've got the producer there, you've got the engineer, the artist maybe, and me as the session player, and you maybe got somebody from the record company. Well, as soon as you start playing, the producer, ah, oh, I don't like that bit. So I might have done like drums, bass, and things, just as like the, the start of the track maybe, or even that's what ends up on the record, depends sometimes. But in like all the percussion-y type noises, you know, cowbells and all that stuff, there'd be something in there that the producer, oh, I don't like that, can we take that bit out, please? It's like grandstanding, you know, in front of the band, just to show that he was in charge kind of thing. But it would be like a really integral piece to me. That it, once it's gone, it kind of like took away all the synergy between all the music, as far as I was concerned. I used to do my head in. I used to think, oh, that's not right, when I get to the end, because you're missing that bit. Anyway, so um, I decided and realised then what I would do from then on is I'd put in uh, a red herring, so I to do all the pieces of music, music, and all the elements there too that I wanted to have in there, perhaps drums, bass, percussion, and some samples and some sounds or whatever there might be. And I put something in there that was like, oh God, that sounds terrible. It was an obvious thing to have hooked out, you know. So basically, and then sure enough, what would happen is when we got to the recording studio, sometimes, as I say, the record company guy would be there and the producer would grandstand, oh, I don't like, can we take that bit out there? I don't, what's that sound going off there? I don't like that, can we get that out, please? Boof. There's me saying thank you very much because now although he he's happy now because he's had his bit hooked out he's done his grandstanding whoever they might be but i'm left with all the bits that i want in the track and the band were usually happy usually pretty much without thing they were happy with what i'd done which i was really grateful for they liked it and the spanish band i mentioned that they actually invited me on to go on tour with them and they paid off me 250 dollars a night in, which was quite a long time ago now, what well, must be 15 years ago now, they offered me $250 a night to go on tour with them around the thing, but per gig that is, so like if they were like gigging three gigs in a week, which I didn't know what they were doing, but if they were gigging three nights a week, I'd have got three lots of $250 in that week, and I kind of said to them, well, I don't know if I can really afford that, because I've got a, my little recorder studio, I've got all the overheads, so I declined the offer, which maybe was a mistake, I could, could maybe have gone and done it, which I, in a way I would have done, but... Uh, Anyway, I just wanted to share all that with you. And uh, so if you get a session player and can't play guitar, trying to do a session player, to do a session on a thing, don't put up with it. Just say, sorry, that's not happening, and get rid of them. Ask them to leave nicely and get someone else that you know. At least try, start with somebody who you know is going to give you a result. That at least you can have a result. So you can end up with a product of some kind. And then maybe try and improve that from there after. Anyway, I'll stop. Yappy now because it's the time's getting on and uh, thanks once again for letting me um, talk to you and sh share some of these words with you. Uh, I'm going to actually put this on my other site that I've just started up now, Bob Ross Studios. This is for my uh, mobile recording studio which I'm in the process of setting up. So it's a few months away yet from getting there but hopefully it'll be pretty cool and any of you out there who perhaps have known me before and might want to revisit the recording situation thing with me, I'll be able to do that wherever you are in the country. I'll come to you, basically, but I'll talk to you more about that a bit later. So I'll come to you and uh, we'll, do, we'll do what we did before again kind of thing. And, and new people, please give me a shout. So that's it, be on Bob Ross Studios. So that's my new account. I've only just opened it on YouTube. Thank you very much again for listening to me and uh, I hope you feel as good as I do. It's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining and... <sighs> Once you can do that, all other considerations are secondary. Enjoy.